Hi, I'm Sue String Jay and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving. So if you're a regular viewer and a subscriber, you will possibly have seen a video I did at the beginning of the year where I talked about 2022 being the year of the squeeze. At the time we were being threatened with price hikes on everything and energy bills were going to go through the roof and six months later, six months down the line, that's exactly what has happened. So. I was preparing for a year of the squeeze and we've had one. So I will put a link to that video in the description box below, but I thought I would have a look at some more extreme frugality tips. If I've counted correctly, I've got 26 and I will go through them now. So the first one is one that I use all the time and that is getting free books. And I tend to go for free audio books, but you can also get free ebooks on the BorrowBox library app. So most libraries subscribe to BorrowBox and it means that if you're a member of the library you can input your library card number and you have a vast array of books that you can choose from for free. You don't even have to get off your bum and go to the library. Although that's another option of course. Go into the library, physically into the library. If you've got one nearby or you pass one, go and get a free book. You can borrow it for three weeks at a time. You can renew online. So it's just so easy. I mean, I think the more we use our libraries, the safer they are. We kind of take them for granted. And with council cuts, they're the kind of things that will go. So that's my first tip. That's a good way to get free books. So my next tip is, it's June. It's time to start Christmas shopping. <laughs> Please don't start all unsubscribing, give me a thumbs down. Um, if you're frugal, if you live a frugal life, then you will want to spread the cost of Christmas. I mean, extreme frugality. You could just say, we're not doing Christmas at all. We're just not going to do it. Or we're going to buy everybody a very small token present. And I think that's absolutely fine. If you're going to go with that, that's fine. If you've got small children or family who really go for Christmas, though, it may not work. So some of you will already have bought some of your Christmas presents in the January and February sales. So you may already have got the gift packs and wrapping paper and cards and that kind of thing, whatever you want to do, at a fraction of their usual price in the sale. So good for you if you've done that. If you haven't done that, then now's a good time to start really looking for bargains. So, you know, there'll be summer sales soon. You may be able to get some suitable gifts in the summer sales, normally July time, isn't it? I'm quite into buying second hand. I quite I, I plan to buy as much as possible second hand for my family. My daughters, they don't mind second hand. They're all into second hand themselves. They love a bit of charity shopping just like their mum. So I'm going to be starting now. I'm going to be starting my Christmas shopping now. I'm not going mad. I mean, we don't go crazy, actually. Um, and I budget for Christmas. So even if I left it to November, I would have the money for Christmas. However, I would then have to pay full price for everything. And if I do it as I go along, I can look out for bargains. So tip number two, if you do Christmas or any other religious festival where you give gifts, start now. Now's the time. Start well in advance anyway. And if you're crafty, you could start making your own presents. Of course, you don't have to buy them. So a lot of members of my Facebook group, my second hand and frugal life, do come over and join, um, are already making presents. So if they're, they're quite, you know, a lot of them are knitters, crocheters, or they, they sew stuff. But there are people growing plants and house plants and that kind of thing. So that really doesn't cost very much to do that kind of thing. Obviously, you need the materials, but you can pick those up as you go along at bargain prices again. So you can make some really lovely presents, particularly for children. And some of them come over and look, put Christmas in or gifts in to the search box on my second hand frugal life and you'll see all sorts of good ideas. So my next tip and something that I have done very recently, I do this probably at least once a year, is to do a wardrobe declutter. And it's good to do it probably every six months because then you will have pushed things to the back of your closet that are oh, perhaps out of season. So that's what I found recently. I went through my, my um, well, it's not really a wardrobe, it's kind of a hole in the wall. If you've seen my tour of Shoestring Cottage, you'll have seen it. It's got a curtain in front of it. But um, I went through everything in there. I donated things that I never, never wear or doesn't fit me or that kind of thing. Just donated things that have sat there and just never get worn. And I sold a couple of items as well, put them on my eBay and Vinted listings. Um, but 
more than that, I actually found some items that I'd kind of forgotten about because it's not been the weather. It's been winter, it's been cold, and all of a sudden it's summer and it's really nice weather. And I'd forgotten about some sort of summery outfits that I'd bought or that I had from last year. So um, do a wardrobe declutter rather than going out and buying something new and you will rediscover clothing you already have. So that's a good tip to save money. We can all do with eating more fruit and vegetables, can't we? Most of us might get our five a day, but we don't do any more than five a day. Um, eat vegetarian. If you actually think about eating some vegetarian meals rather than meat meals all the time, even if it's just two or three times a week, you'll save money and you'll probably consume more fresh or frozen produce. So it's good for your health too. So eat more vegetarian food. Um, it also gives you just maybe some ideas for things that you wouldn't have tried before. I mean, maybe you would, they'd become new family favourites. For example, my family love a good nut roast, and we like particularly a cashew nut and mushroom roast. Um, and that's really nice as a change for from meat for a Sunday meal or a special meal. So, you know, you could do that. If you, There's so, so many online, but you can look at the Vegetarian Society. Um, there's Meat Free Mondays. There's so many anyway. I think... Um, BBC Good Food is good for any recipes I find, but vegetarian as well. So we're all looking at ways to save energy. And one thing I've started doing is to boil a kettle in the morning and fill a flask so that I can make my coffee and tea throughout the day. I do find for tea that I need to reboil a certain amount, but it only takes seconds. So um, that's a way to save a bit of energy. Boil a whole load of water at the beginning of the day and you can only need to boil it once then. This tip is really just for those in the UK. So on the NHS, we get prescriptions from our doctor, but we do have to pay an amount towards the prescriptions. And if you end up getting a lot, that can be quite expensive. It's like nearly £10 a time now. Um, obviously, it's a lot cheaper than paying for the medication, but you can it can still add up if you have two or three medications. So make sure that you get a prepayment certificate. It saves you loads more money. I think I pay something like... I do an annual one and I pay £10 a month towards it on direct debit. So that covers about three prescriptions. So that would be £30 nearly if I was buying them individually. So it's worth doing that. Um, the other thing it's really worth doing is just checking to see if the condition that you particularly have is exempt from medical charges. Um, I did think that mine was because I recently, I think I mentioned it in a previous video, I was recently diagnosed with hypothyroidism um, and I thought that that was one of the the things that you got exempt for so that I would have all of my medication free. Um, actually, when I've looked into it, to it, it's not hyperthyroidism, it's hypothyroidism that is covered under that. But there are several types of illness that are covered and are exempt from charges. Your medical provider may not always remember to tell you. So it's worth looking into that on the DirectGov website. With prices of food going skyrocketing, really, going higher and higher, it's really worth, if you have any space at all, growing a vegetable garden. So you don't have to grow all of your own food, but you can grow things that perhaps you wouldn't be able to afford in the shops that are a bit more expensive. You can grow a lot of things like tomatoes that you probably use all the time in cooking, so that can be quite handy. And if you have no garden, you can get your name down on the queue for the wait list for an allotment. Now, a lot of them have a long waiting list. If you know somebody who has an allotment, it's worth having a chat with them to see if there's anybody who is struggling with a full allotment to see if they'll let you use half of it, because we actually did that for a while. Um, and if you don't have that, it's also worth just asking around. Do you have family or friends who've got a really big garden or could you put something on a local Facebook group? You know, I will come and do some of your gardening if you let me use some of your garden for a veggie patch or for you could share the produce, you know, that kind of thing. I think that should go on much more, that kind of thing. So it's really worth looking at that. Or you could ask your local council if you could start a community garden. I, OK, that wouldn't all be for you, the produce. It would be for the community. But you could certainly take some of it and get some experience in growing fresh produce. My next tip to embrace an extreme frugal lifestyle would be to really know and appreciate what you already have. So don't just think, oh, I need a new this, new that. Just think, what have I got already? So, you know, for example, you may have seen my bedroom transformation. I did a makeover on our bedroom and I used furniture we already have. It was fairly solid, you know, furniture. It was all mismatched, nothing special, but I painted it. So for the price of a couple of cans of paint, 
I transformed those pieces of furniture and they look good as new, if not better. And they will be very expensive to buy painted furniture like that in the shops. Um, but also, you know, don't not just upcycling. You could look at really trying to repair what you already have. So, you know, you've got a hole in your favourite dress. Don't just dump it in the charity shop bag. Just make, try have a go. Have a go at mending. See if you can do that. Um, you can always look on YouTube to find out how to do repairs to anything. It's really, really worth a try. So make the most of what you already have. And that also includes decluttering. So I mentioned the wardrobe decluttering. Um, I've started decluttering a lot of our cupboards because, you know, we may be moving. So I want to just whittle it all down now. And I've discovered things that have been shoved to the back of the cupboard that I had forgotten about and now I'm using. So it's really good to have a declutter so you know what you have and you start to use what you have. And then once you've done your declutter, some of the items you could donate, some of it you might want to sell. As I mentioned with my wardrobe declutter, I did sell a couple of items. Uh, you might find you've got quite a few things to sell. For example, if you declutter your shed, you might think, well, I've got loads of camping equipment I don't use. Somebody else would love that. So perhaps you can sell that on Facebook Marketplace or locally on Gumtree or something like that. So have a little think, you know, by having a declutter, you can also raise some extra cash to help you in your extreme frugality. And when you think about going out, don't always think I've got to go to a restaurant, I've got to go to a pub, um, I've got to go somewhere where we spend lots of money. So we're really lucky we have a nice garden and we're quite home birds really. We quite like to stay in and we quite like to have friends around. I had some friends around on Friday um, and I made them a meal. And OK, I probably spent what I would have spent going out to a restaurant feeding them. But I will get return invitations and I won't have to pay anything. I'll take a bottle of wine, maybe. Um, so, you know, it's, you can do things much more cheaply. And there's nothing we like more than sitting in a pub beer garden with a beer. But we've got a lovely seated area just outside the house at the top of the garden. And it's really nice on a summer's evening to just sit out there, have a chat with a glass of wine or a beer or whatever, really. So just change the way you think about going out and use what you've got already. Use your home, make the most of your home, have friends around, you know. Um, as I say, usually if you have friends around, you'll get some invitations back. You could have a potluck supper. I've mentioned that before. It's quite an American concept, but it's a really cheap way of having a get together. Everybody brings a dish. You don't know what you're going to get. I mean, normally we say so many people bring mains or like savouries and so many people bring sweets otherwise you would just end up with cake and nothing else for dinner which is not ideal um but it's a really cheap way of having to get together so have a little think about out of the box you know have a little think about the ways you can socialize that are a lot more cheap than just going out to the pub or going out to a restaurant in my previous video on extreme frugality and many other videos since i've gone on about meal planning and meal planning is obviously really good but the other thing to when you think about food is to just forget this idea that you've got to cook something marvelous every night and just keep it very simple if you get that kind of simple quick and simple recipe ideas if you get a lot of those going then you're much less likely to give in to takeaways and takeouts and convenience food so have a repertoire of really easy quick meals that you can rustle up in no time at all like you know just a pasta sauce you could actually batch cook a load of pasta sauce and keep it in the freezer and then just do pasta with cheese grated cheese you can do something on toast beans on toast egg on toast you can do jacket potatoes that they're really good with all sorts of fillings um you can keep leftovers in the freezer so that you've got you know plenty to eat that's very simple and you know you don't have to make every cooking session a, an event you know you don't have to be a tv chef keep it really really simple just have a salad make a quick salad and maybe have a tin of tuna and some mayonnaise on it or some hard-boiled eggs that kind of thing just keep it simple it's really easy to spend a fortune on the various cleaning products that we're told that we need to clean our houses and keep them germ free but in actual fact you only really need a handful of products and, you know, you could go totally natural and go for bicarb soda and vinegar and that kind of thing as well. But where you do buy products, think about diluting them. So if you buy quite decent quality washing up liquid, then you can probably dilute it by half. I would say decent quality because I've tried doing it with a really cheap 49p bottle I got from Aldi or Lidl, actually, I think it was Lidl. And it was just not very good at all. It didn't cut through any grease. It wasn't that good before you diluted it. So, But if you're somebody who buys, you know, slightly better washing up liquid you probably save money by 
diluting it. And I would dilute all sorts of things, actually, not just cleaning products. I even dilute orange juice because, you know, just a little bit. People don't notice. I know people that dilute milk as well, but I tend to use milk in my tea. So it kind of seems pointless that I just need to put more of it in the tea. So, but you can dilute a lot of things, shampoo, um, even my conditioner maybe. Um, but anything that's kind of soapy, I don't buy hand wash but if you do, you could dilute that. I just use a solid bar of soap. It's much, much cheaper and lasts longer. And there's less plastic waste as well, which is why I like to do that. But so you have a little think about thing, things that you can dilute. Another way to be extremely frugal is to use your tea bags more than once. I say this as somebody who likes a really strong cup of tea. So I could not be the second person to use the tea bag. I would have to be the first person. Um, but... A lot of people I know make really weak tea with one tea bag and then throw the tea bag away. So if you like your tea not too strong, then use it twice. Just use your tea bag twice. Same with if you um, make a pot of tea using loose leaf tea. Just top it up, top it up and until it's too weak to drink. Use your tea bags twice. So we're darting about all over the place, aren't we? I'm going back to saving energy now. Um, use a steamer. If you've got a vegetable steamer, you know, three tier one is best. Um, use that to cook your vegetables. You've only got the gas or the electricity on one part of the pan and you're cooking, you can cook potatoes in the bottom or when they're boiling, put your veg on the top. You can cook everything on one bit of your hob. So you save yourself some energy and save yourself some money. I don't buy branded goods. I don't buy branded anything unless it's second hand. But when we're talking about food and groceries and things that you would buy in the supermarket, just don't buy branded stuff and you will save yourself loads of money. There may be one or two exceptions. I have mentioned before that there's a type of coffee that I just really enjoy and I'm not a great coffee fan and didn't really drink coffee for years, but I do really like Milicano coffee, just instant, nothing fancy. And I have one cup of that a day. So I will always try to buy Milicano rather than supermarket own brand, which I just don't like. There's no point in buying something you really don't like. But at least try it um, and try to kind of downgrade everything you buy to the supermarket's own brands and you will find you save so much money. Don't be a brand snob if you want to practice extreme frugality. Every now and again, so that you don't waste food, make sure that you do a week where you just eat from the pantry. So when I say pantry, that could be your food cupboards, that could be your freezer, that could be your fridge. Obviously the stuff in the fridge needs using first. So make sure that every now and then you just have a week off shopping and you eat the stuff that's in your pantry and probably in all likelihood that's going to be items that you've either bought too many of without realising or that you don't really like that much once you've bought them you think oh, I don't really fancy that so I've certainly got some things like that in the cupboard I've also got something like three or four jars of curry paste and I don't quite know why I've got those so you know I need to eat from the pantry and add in some form of a curry for this week's meal. So if you do that every now and then, then you maybe could save yourself some money on your groceries. And certainly that's worth doing when you're feeling a bit skint and when money's feeling a bit tight, then eat from the pantry. And my next tip is one that I like because it's so much better for the planet. It's more eco-friendly, but buy reusable everything wherever you can. So rather than buying single use things like wipes to clean your house, which I think are incredibly wasteful and environmentally damaging, cut up an old towel and just use some soapy water to clean things or a bit of antiseptic even if you want antiseptic wipes. Um, use um, makeup pads, the bamboo or reusable makeup pads rather than cotton wool each time. There's all sorts of things you can use. Dishcloths, I always buy, if I buy dishcloths at all, I will buy the kind of knitted old fashioned ones, the ones that you can stick in the wash. And you know, if you're paranoid about germs, I think a hot wash will be fine. But if you're paranoid, just soak them in a bit of antiseptic or, you know, something to kill off the germs before, a bit of bleach maybe, before you wash them. So um, there's so many things, aren't there, that we buy that are just throw away and you know I don't like it water in bottles you know you've got water in the tap save you money and they all save you money too and that's the good thing so um there's things like if you're a woman of a certain age sanitary towels or a moon cup you know you can use those the um fabric sanitary towels you can use them again and again and again and wash them they'll last you ages and save you loads of money and save the environment too um, and also cling film. I mean, I do have some cling film in the kitchen. I do have some foil, but I try not to use them. I've got some beeswax wraps. I use that those a lot and they're washable beeswax wraps instead of cling film. 
Um, and I just sometimes, if I've got a plate of something, like if it's a bowl of pasta that's left over, I'll just stick another little plate on top of it. So you don't always have to just put cling film on everything. There was a time, you know, even in my childhood, <coughs> excuse me, I mean, obviously I'm of a certain age, but I remember when cling film first arrived, you know, it was all being advertised on the TV and they were having a glass of milk and putting it in, turning it upside down. And before that arrived, what did we do? We just had containers with lids on or we've got a plate on, as I said, or, you know, a bit of greaseproof paper or something to cover things before we put them in the fridge. So it's more than it's more than easy, really, to do without things like cling film, which are bad for the environment, and obviously you should keep buying them. And my next tip is around food as well, and um, costing recipes out. So, you know, thinking about, you can really find out the cheap family recipes to make by costing out your ingredients. So work out what the price of an egg is, what the price of, I don't know, four ounces of flour, if you're old school, um, costs you, and that kind of thing. Um, how much is half a pint of milk, you know? And then when you're making a recipe, you can actually see how much it's costing per portion. So you can see what recipes are really good value. And I got this idea from this lovely old book from the 70s. Some of you will have seen this, The Shirley Good Kitchen. She had a TV series, I believe. I didn't watch it at the time. I would have been a child, I think. Um, but she has, you know treating your kitchen in the way that a professional caterer would. So um, they'd always buy the best ingredients at a price as low as possible. Well, who wouldn't do that? Um, when the food is prepared and cooked, there has to be little or no wastage. We try that, don't we? So um, whether he follows a recipe or invents his own, the chef knows to the penny just how much the ingredients will cost. But, you know, you have to. If you want to turn a profit in a professional kitchen, you have to know. And then she talks talking about how to... Um, cost out your ingredients you know and you can write it on the container how much I don't know four ounces of red lentils is or whatever what you've paid you'd have to update them obviously food prices are going up but every now and then you need to update them and if you can pick this up second hand it's got some really great recipes and some good tips in it on you know treating your kitchen as a professional would in order to be as economical as possible And the extreme frugalist will never use a tumble dryer. If you've got a family with like four kids and it's the midst of winter and you use a tumble dryer, I don't blame you. But I don't have that now. I don't have the children at home. I've never actually had a tumble dryer. Um, I will hang things on the line. I like things on the line. I think they come in smelling fresh and nice and they dry more quickly. In the winter, it's not such a lovely picture. You know, we've got a clothes horse, you know, an aero type thing and everything will be drying on the aero. We do also have a dehumidifier. So if things are just taking too long to dry, we don't want a load of condensation in the house. So we use a dehumidifier, um, but we don't use a tumble dryer. So that's a lot of power to run a tumble dryer. So consider as much as you possibly can hanging your clothes out rather than shoving them in the dryer. Be aware of energy draining devices. So they're called vampires, called vampire energy, isn't it? Things like perhaps the television that you can leave on standby that uses something like 70% of the energy that it would if it was on actually and you were sitting watching it. Or you know, chargers left in, that's a, a just-in thing. I'm always unplugging char chargers after him where he's been charging his phone up. Um, just turn all your plugs off at the wall, then you know that when something's not being used, it's not emitting any energy. So just be really aware of that. You know, have you got a music system that you can just be left on standby? Just make sure that you turn them off at the plug when they're not in use, and then you won't be just paying for nothing. I know it's only a small amount, but you know, it all adds up, especially when energy prices are so high. Another tip from the Frugalista would be to buy produce seasonally. Um, things like strawberries are absolutely brilliant at the moment. It is June. They're absolutely wonderful. And they're probably the cheapest they're ever going to be um, throughout the year. And they're just so much nicer. You know, buying like strawberries in December, they cost you a lot of money. They won't taste nice. But that applies to pretty much any produce. If you're buying it in season, there's plenty of it. It's going to be cheaper. You can then preserve it if you want to. So you could cut some up and put it in the freezer. Or you can make some jam or, you know, whatever you do to preserve fruit and vegetables. So buy seasonally. It is cheaper. And Another way to find your produce cheaper would be to visit a market at the end of the day. Um, if you are lucky enough to have a really good market in your town, then use it. They're always really good value. Um, we popped into, we were just out for a day at Berry St Edmunds, which is in the county um, to the north of us. And we just happened to go back to the market. We'd wandered around in the day, hadn't bought much. We happened to go back right at the end of the day. It was about four o'clock. So we we're just packing up. 
and they were giving cabbages away. They were literally saying, please take these cabbages. Um, uh, first of all, they were trying sort of 10p, 10p a cabbage, and we said, we don't really want them. And in the end, I think we took one home because you know, other than pickling it, I guess I could have frozen it, but there was only so much cabbage we wanted. But there was loads of other stuff going really cheap as well, like bread and fruit that was you know, getting past its best. So we could have got an awful lot. We were out for the day, so we didn't take advantage of that. We're not lucky enough to have a really good quality market here. But if I lived somewhere like Barry St Edmunds, that's where I'd be going end of the day to get my bargains. Still on the subject of fresh produce, don't buy it ready chopped. I mean, unless you've got some form of disability and it's really, really hard for you to chop vegetables. And even then I'd say buy canned or frozen. Um, you are paying a lot. you getting a lot of packaging, you're paying a lot for someone else to chop your vegetables for you. And I know it can save time if you're in a hurry, but really you could do this as part of your batch cooking, just pre-chop a load of onions, pre-chop a load of carrots, pre-chop a load of peppers, stick them in your freezer or just leave them in the fridge until you're ready to use them. Um, I would say though that by pre-chopping a long way ahead or by buying pre-chopped, you will lose some of the nutrition from the produce. So as soon as it's cut, you start to use some of, lose some of the vitamins. So that's some another reason not to buy pre-chopped produce. It's very much worth investing in a freezer when you are practicing extreme frugality because although they cost energy to run of course they give you an opportunity to preserve your market bargains that I just mentioned all the yellow sticker reduced bar bargains that you manage to find in the supermarket um, anything you've grown yourself you know they anything that you you buy will last a lot longer you know even a loaf of bread for us we don't get through a loaf of bread quick enough in the summer to eat it before it starts going mouldy. So we'll take it straight from the freezer. Even if we want a sandwich, a few slices, you stick them on the breadboard for 10 minutes and they have defrosted. So they're useful for that, really useful for preserving food and they will save you money. Um, you do need to keep them full. They do say if you just freeze empty milk cartons and with water, just put them in there, you want to keep it full because then when you open it, less warm air can go in, so therefore it's more efficient. And the other thing that's supposed to be good, and I have done this recently with our big fridge freezer, is to hoover the back, um, all the mechanics at the back, I can't think what they're called, the wire bits, um, and that apparently also makes it more energy efficient. So really investing in a freezer and using it wisely, I think that's a really good way to save money. This is something I got from my Facebook group. So talking of a freezer, um, you can actually store flour in your freezer and it will last up to two years, apparently. Um, it's also good if you don't have space just to leave your flour in the freezer, and who does? Some of us don't have the space for that. But if you put the flour in your freezer for 48 hours before you then store it in a nice plastic bag, maybe you've got to store it in a good tin or something like that, um, it will stop the any weevils, any eggs from hatching, so you won't end up with sacks of flour full of weevils which will just then have to be thrown away so you can use your freezer to preserve your flour so I think that was 26 tips but that is all my extreme frugality tips for today anyway I'm sure I'll come up with some more and do another video like this but if you missed my first one as I say I'll leave the link in the description box below and check out some of my other videos as well for more frugal living hints and tips don't forget if you enjoyed this to give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe to my channel and then you will know next time I publish a video. I'm publishing twice a week on a Sunday and a Wednesday usually. Sometimes it doesn't work. Usually you'll find me then. Um, so if you hit the notification bell you'll know every time something is published from me. Okay that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.